Chapter Three, Mirror Mirror. The Queen spent the following months further acquainting herself with her new home. With the King away, Snow occupied much of the Queen's time. The two picnicked in the woods, and the Queen taught the child delicate needlepoint. She told her tales of dragons while they snuggled by the warm fire in the Queen's chamber, where Snow slept while the King was deployed. The two almost spent many sunny afternoons visiting Snow's mo mother's gravesite. The mausoleum was surrounded by a lovely, overgrown garden filled with creepy roses, wisteria, jasmine, honeysuckle, and gardenia, all favorites of the king's first wife. The scent was almost intoxicating. The queen would sit with Snow for hours, telling her the t stories of her mother that she had learned from the letters of the king. Letters the king had brought her, and reading some aloud, was my first mother very pretty? Snow asked. I believe she was, my dears. I shall ask your father if there are any portraits I may show you. I'm sure she was very beautiful. Snow looked distressed. What is it, darling? Snow cocked her head like a little rabbit might, at hearing a noise. It warmed the queen's heart. Well, mamma, how can you be sure she was beautiful? The queen smiled at the pre precocious child. Well, my little bird, you are the most beautiful creature I have ever seen, and so it only stands to reason. Snow seemed contented with this de deduction. Tell me more about her, please, Mama. What was her favorite color? What was her favorite dessert? I'm not sure, Snow. She may speak of these things in her missives, but I do know she was a very capable horsewoman. She adored horses. And hope to teach you how to ride while, when you were old enough. Shall I teach you to ride, little bird? Oh yes, mamma. I love horses. To you, I hadn't known. What's your favorite color, mamma? Is it red? I think it must be red. You wear it so often. Yes, you're right, little bird. And mine, mamma. Do you know? I think blue. Yes, mamma. Shall we pick some flowers to take back to the castle? It looks as if it may rain soon. We should venture home before we get soaked through. Yes, Mama. Let's pick flowers, red and blue flowers. They gathered flowers as it began to rain. They arrived at the castle steps, soaked indeed, little sprigs of flowers in the folds of their skirts. But they were happy, and their soaked clothes did little to dampen their moods. Verona was waiting for them when they arrived back at the castle. Both laughing with the giddiness of the day, my gods! Look at you both! You're wet to the bone. You had best get out of these wet things. I have hot baths ready. Hurry along, Verona said, taking the flowers from the rain-drenched beauties. Will you float the flowers in bowls of water and distribute them around the castle, Verona? The queen requested. The queen thought having the castle filled with Snow's mother's favorite fra fragrances. Might make it feel as if her mother were near here. How the queen wished she knew where her mo own mother was laid to rest. Of course, my queen, Verona answered. Then she ushered her into the queen's chamber, where her bath had been prepared. The queen spent most of her time in one remote part of the room, where she could settle into what she was sure was the most comfortable seat in the kingdom, a throne-like padded armchair upholstered. Upholstered with velvet cushions and plush trimmings, the chair was set near the fireplace beside an alcove shelving her best loved illuminated manuscripts. With her husband gone, she'd been ending most of her days there and would do so again this evening. But first, a bath. Verona exited, and the queen stepped into the soothing tub. The steaming water melted a frost that seemed to cover the queen's ev every bone. Despite the rain and the resulting shivers, she had a pleasant day with snow. Still, she missed the king terribly. She mused as she watched the swirls of steam rise. The chamber was enormous. The stone walls were draped with detailed tapestries of red, gold, and black that hung from ornately molded rods set in iron bracket brackets. The tapestries not only beautified the room, but kept the frigates. Frigid, chill in outside, the grand fireplace was flanked by two enormous statues that seemed to have souls. 
Each portrayed a beautiful and beastly winged woman, both with faces severe and remote. Their downcast eyes gazed down from a towering height. A quiet knock upon the chamber door caused the queen to stir. Verona, I presume, the queen said. It is I, Verona responded from behind the door. My lady, I took the liberty of suggesting the cook make some of Snow's favorites for this evening's meal. The girl seems a little sullen. The queen didn't respond. She's missing her father, Verona continued. As you are, I'm sh I am sure. He has been away for several months now. The queen considered Verona's words for a moment, then broke her silence. Neither of us would thrive so well without you, Verona. We thank you and love you for that. Thank you, Majesty. Will you need any further assistance? More hot water or your bath sheet, perhaps? The queen had already begun to step from her tub, wrapping herself in the huge soft towel which had been warmed on a small coal apparatus next to her. I've already emerged, my dear. You may enter, the queen said. As her attendant, it would have been Verona's duty to bathe the queen, but the queen was insisted that no one see her without a painted face and co coiffed hair. Recently, however, she'd been become much more comfortable with Verona and had a allowed the woman to see her without makeup and finery. Verona shifted uncomfortably, no doubt because she knew how the queen felt about others seeing her before she'd been made up. I'm sure the king will be home soon, my lady, Verona said, while shifting little trinkets in the room. Pretending to organize them, th though, she might have just been attempting not to look upon the unpainted face of her queen. In the meantime, perhaps you and Snow would benefit from an adventure. Ah, do you have an esca esca escapade in mind, my sister? The queen asked, a slight smile creeping upon her lips. The Apple Blossom Festival. Your subjects would be thrilled if you were to attend. It would make f for an even more rousing event to have their queen and princess there to crown the Apple Blossom Maiden. The queen considered this. She was still, after all the ceremonies, festivals, and attendance, not very comfortable in large crowds. She preferred to keep to herself, and then she remembered the child. You would join us, of, cor of course, the queen asked Verona. Indeed, my queen, Verona said, smiling brightly and forgetting not to look upon the queen's face. Let us attend, then. Thank you, my lady, Verona said, curtsying. Might I be ex excused to make the arrangements? Of course, dear. I can manage myself, the queen said with her back to Verona, gazing at her lady-in-waiting's face through her mirror's reflection. But as Verona bowed out, the queen noticed something that greatly disturbed her, even terrified her. Just as Verona had closed the chamber door and the queen found herself alone, something appeared to move behind her in her mirror, the one the king had given to her on her, their wedding day. Something, perhaps someone, was inside with her. But it couldn't have been so. She surveyed the room and she, she was clearly alone. Verona was locked, had locked the door when she left the room, and as was customary, locked it when she had entered. There was no chance anyone could have sneaked in. Still, she was sure she'd seen a face appear in the mirror just over her shoulder. She stared into the mirror and then searched the room. Anyone who had seen her would have thought she'd gone mad, but she needed to assure herself that she was indeed alone. And after thoroughly examining the room, that was the very conclusion she came to. It must have been a trick of the light. She settled down into her favorite chair to calm her racing heart. The heat from the fire soothed her, and she ran her naked toes over the bearskin rug at her feet. She must be losing her mind from sorrow. She wished she knew when, if, her husband would return. Her eyes began heavy, and she began to drift off. But she was not able to sleep. Still, unsure that she was alone, she stood up and again walked over to the mirror. Just one last look. One more glance, and then she would be able to settle down. She leaned into the mirror to examine it more closely. Perhaps it had been rigid or charmed. Good evening, my queen. The queen attempted to scream, 
but could not usher sound from her constricted throat. She instinctively, instinctually swiped at the huge mirror and batted it off the stone wall. The mirror crashed to the marble floor, but for a moment, the queen was sure she'd glimpsed the shattered countenance of a man's face looking up at her through the mirrored shards. Her face cracked and broken. Then he faded away as quickly as he appeared. Your Highness, what's happened? Are you well? asked the, an attendant from behind the door. From his breathlessness, the queen could tell he'd rushed there. The queen attempted to catch her own breath. I am quite well, thank you. I've simply broken a mirror, answered the queen, feeling a bit lightheaded. Very well, the attendant said. We will clear that away. As the attendant began to walk away, the queen heard him say something else. She could have sworn she heard her father's name uttered. The attendant returned with others to clear the mess. The queen watched as her attendant scuttled out of the room with the broken bits. Then the cursed thing was gone. Still, her thoughts were plagued with images of the man in the mirror as she made her way to dinner. The castle was quieter without the king's hearty laughter and childlike energy. Even the small dining hall looked imposing and empty without him. And Verona had been right. Snow did look solemn with her father away. In an attempt to cheer the child, the queen said, I have a surprise for you, my little bird. We're to attend the Apple Blossom Festival the day after next. Snow smiled, and it looked as though the stone beauty above the fireplace smiled as well. If the queen could only bring herself to do the same.